everything is real, everything is permitted. Who played at least once at Assassin's Creed heard this sentence. It is the supreme motto of the Assassins in the video game, he used to fight against the Templar Knights, enemies of the Assassin Order. Generally speaking, Templar Knights are well known to all of us. Their order was founded in 1119 from Hugh de Pan in order to provide assistance to the pilgrims in Jerusalem. Their name, Militia Templi, comes from the establishment of their headquarters in the Royal Palace of Jerusalem, next to Solomon Temple. With the curse of the centuries, Templars acquired enormous wealth thanks to bequests and sedations. To the detriment of their vow of poverty, seen as a fearsome economic political power, Philip IV, the fair, obtained the suppression of the order from Pope Clement V. Thus, between 1307 and 1314, the knights were condemned to atrocious tortures and killed. On the 11th of March 1314, in front of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the last master, Jacques de Molay, burned at the stake, putting an end to the Temple Order. How about the Assassin Order? It already existed as we know it from the video game, where their supreme motto, nothing is real, everything is permitted, comes from. Let's check it out. The Assassin Order was founded by Hassan Sabah, an Ismaili leader who occupied the Alamut Fortress in 1090. This fortress already existed since around 865 because the ruler, Basudan ibn Mazuban, during a hunting trip observed his eagle perching on an imposing mountain. So he decided to build a fortress in that precise point and call it Alamut, which means teaching of the eagle or nest of punishment. Hassan meticulously planned his operation for two years. He was living in hiding in the town of Kazbin at approximately 60 kilometers from the Alamut castle. The vizier Nizam al-Mulk was against his Ismaili doctrine and wanted to harass him thanks to its strategic position. The fortress had never before been captured by military means, but it was surrounded by a fertile valley. So Hassan dispatched his reliable supporters there to convey the inhabitants to his doctrine and begin settlements around the castle. In the summer of 1090, Hassan set out from Kazvin toward Alamut on a mountainous route through Ande. He remained at Ande discussed as school teacher named Dekuda until he was certain that a number of his supporters had gained employment at the fortress itself. Still in disgust, Hassan made his way into the fortress, earning the trust and friendship of many of his soldiers. Careful not to attract attention to the castle's lord Mahdi, Hassan finally approached him, revealing his true identity, and declared that the castle now belonged to him. Mahdi called upon the guards to arrest and remove Hassan from the castle, only to find them prepared to follow Hassan's every command. Standard, he realized he had been tricked and was allowed to exit the castle freely. Before leaving, however, Madi was given a draft of 3,000 gold dinars as a payment of the fortress. Alamut was captured without resorting to any violence. Hassan swiftly embarked on a complete refortification of the complex by enhancing the walls and structure of a series of storage facilities. The fortress was to act as a self-sustaining stronghood during major confrontations. The perimeters of the rooms were aligned with limestone so as to preserve provisions to be used in times of crisis. Hassan took on the task of irrigating the surrounding villages of the Alamut Valley. The land at Valley's floor was arable land, allowing for the cultivation of dry crops, including barley, wheat and rice. The construction of Alamut's famous library likely occurred after Hassan's fortification of the castle and its surrounding valley. With its astronomical instruments and rare collection of works, the library attracts scholars and scientists of a variety of religious persuasions from around the world who visited it for a many months at the time, hosted by the Ismailis. Sadly, Alamut was destroyed during the Mongol invasion of the 13th century. Hassan had a reputation for being an austere man who enforced Islamic law without hesitation. He had two of his sons executed, one for drinking wine and the other for a murder charge.
read the article on my blog, gabriel.wordpress.com.